<laughs> One million Google accounts compromised by Gooligan. Well, aptly named Android malware, 86 apps and third-party marketplaces can root 74% of all Android phones. But that's because most Android phones are not on a modern version of Android. This affects ice cream uh, sandwich, jelly bean, Kit Kat, and lollipop. Uh, wow. If you that's are on, range. if you are on uh, marzipan or nougat, what is M? I forget. Marshmallow or nougat, you're okay. But most users on Android are not. And unfortunately, a lot of the people who are vulnerable to this are people who have less expensive phones in, uh, in other nations, who haven't, you know, who are have carriers and companies, that, manufacturers that don't care about updating. And uh, so, you know, the most vulnerable people in some ways. Gooligan <laughs> begins when a user downloads and installs an infected app on a vulnerable device. And as I said, there are a lot of apps, although note, those apps are on third-party app stores. So step one, do not download apps from other sources. Get them from the Google Play Store. But if you've got that third, you know, go to your settings and turn off, install applications from third parties. That should not be on in your Google phone because you might even get a link in a malware or a phishing message that, that downloads and installs an APK, that'll be blocked if you don't have that setting turned on. It's not on by default. After an infected app is installed, it sends data about the device to the command and control server. Gooligan then says, ah, yes, I'll be with you in a moment, then downloads a rootkit from the server, which takes advantages of multiple exploits on Android 4 and 5. If rooting is successful, the attacker, of course, has full control of the device and can do whatever the hell he wants remotely. <laughs> After root access, Gooligan downloads a new and malicious module from the server and installs it on the affected device. This module injects code into running Google Play or Google Mobile services to mimic user behavior so Gooligan can avoid detection. Jeez Louise. At this point, you can Gooligan will can gives you the option to steal a user's Google email account and authentication token information. So if they can get into your system and you're using Google Authenticator. It gets the secret from Google Authenticator. Now your two-factor is useless. That's why Google's probably recommending this new system. Install apps oh, from so Google. Wait, wait, wait. Two-factor is useless because... So the way the Authenticator slowly. works right. is it creates a six-digit code that is from the current time and right. a secret number. Yes. So if they can get your secret number from Authenticator, they can authenticate from right. any device. Your secret number should be protected. It's as important as your password. So if they've rooted the phone, I mean, I'm projecting this. It doesn't say this specifically, though it implies it. They say you can get they 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 can steal authentication token information. I don't know if that means inbound codes or actually just get the secret. If they get the secret, it's all bets are off. They can generate codes all day. Is the secret in it forever? Once I set up, yeah, the secret is forever. You can reset it's it forever. Yeah, you can reset it. Um, you know, you can get a new secret. So my temptation is to say that 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 those secrets should be reset on some timetable. However, when that secret is communicated, that's a weak, a vulnerable point. Yeah. Yep. That's why they do it with QR code. So uh, when you first set up Google Two Factor, right, you get oh, a QR so code like on being... the screen. That's the secret numbers in that QR code, and right, you right, scan right. it with your phone because you wouldn't want to enter in a twenty-digit number. And now it's in your phone. And, and, you know, you preserve that QR code at your peril. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to say, okay, bye-bye, and that's done. And that now the only thing that has that secret number is your authenticator. But you can manually reset it. I think this new system is is better, is more secure. I'm not a security expert on that. Except when you're someplace where your phone is not going to work for three days. Right. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but so all security is, is it not? When is I, it tra that I travel internationally. Yeah. I'm not sure it's the base token they're taking, but the the, the basic the if they're getting the is, is intercepting the, the SMS, then yeah, I would assume yeah, but, that Authenticator puts yeah. the no, that token I th I somewhere th safe. It's more that um, if you're using Google services through the web browser, then mm -hmm. you're basically sending an uh, authentication token from the from the browser. That's not so bad because you only have 30 seconds to use it. The token's only good for 30 seconds. Yeah. But yeah, if you can if you can get the one that lets you reset it and create new ones, then that's much more problematic. That's a real problem. Yeah, not clear. Um, this stuff is hard.
And Director of Android Security Adrian Ludwig said he and other Google officials have worked closely with Checkpoint, the company that discovered this, to investigate Google again and to protect users against the threat it poses. There's no evidence data was accessed from compromised accounts or that individual users were targeted. Note that one of the main things that they do is not to steal your information to, to, to attack you, but to put adware on your phone to generate revenue <laughs> or to install apps from Google Play and rate them to raise their reputation. Okay. Or, or, it's a kind of garden variety scams. Uh, wow. Google's been using a service called Verify Apps to scan individual handsets for signs of Gooligan and other ghost push apps. And when detected, device warner, owners receive a warning. Installations are halted. So that's that. That's that. I think that new thing where when you download, this is a great feature. And I, I didn't realize they could backport it to earlier versions of Android. When you download a new app, it scans it before it installs it. Huh. huh. We've taken many actions to protect our users and improve the security of the Android ecosystem overall, including revoking affected users' Google account tokens, providing them with clear instructions to sign back in securely, removing apps related to the issue from affected devices, deploying enduring verify apps improvements. So they're doing the best they can. But the problem is fundamental is that old versions of Android... Do not get fixed.